everybody, and welcome to another episode of Nerds with Friends, your home for all UFO conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that episode, like already, like I think two hundred. Yeah, it, no, it's it's over two hundred it? plays right now. I think. Um, and we put it up a day late cause I was lazy on Monday night and didn't put it up. Yeah. People love the UFOs. So more UFO shit coming up. <laughs> yeah. So we're, a- we're an alien podcast now. Also a uh, shout out to free that child. You know, he's showing us a lot of love on the comments. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was like, I'm surprised you guys aren't bigger. More people right? know about I mean, you. I'm like, people need we've been saying that for years. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, fuck Spencer Fisher. <laughs> 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 fuck that guy. Fucking hater. He had some opinions. He had sure. some opinions. Yeah. He was mad that we weren't disclosing government documents. <laughs> yeah, like not trying to fucking die, my guy. I like, mean, what what tipped you off? The fact that we talked about tenant for twenty minutes yeah. in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and then we didn't disclose any shit. Yeah. I mean, we're we're obviously just talking about what we thought was gonna happen. Right. So. Which will happen. He actually apologized a little bit on the YouTube. So. Did he? Kind of. He's like, sorry for the comments. I'm just, I take this very seriously. I was oh, like, oh, you know, maybe. All fuck right. You, fuck you a little less now. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Whatever, dude. It was a horse dick before. <laughs> now it's a regular dick. Yeah. One of those alien dicks we yeah. talked about. Yeah. Alien dick creatures. So for any newcomers to the show, uh, we're not a government whistleblowing podcast. Yet. We're a podcast about nerdy stuff. Stuff we nerd out about, whether it's tabletop RPGs, video games, movies, uh, furries. I don't know. We haven't really talked. We talk about we furries. Talk about furries. Yeah, every once in a while. Pup play. Yeah, that's another big You know, thing. he's lying. We are a government podcast. We just drop clues. You got to listen. Yeah, you got to listen really hard. They're mostly towards the end, so yeah. you got to listen all the way through. <laughs> and then you got to piece it together. Yeah, and then it's tied to the like button. So make sure you like and subscribe. Then and we'll, we'll send you <laughs> what we don't know. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Um Again, like and subscribe. We do appreciate you guys. And, we, you know, good or bad, we do appreciate the comments. So uh, thank you guys for uh, commenting on the show. All of our info is at nerdswithfriendspodcast.com. You can uh, check out our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter all from there, as well as listen to episodes. And you be- can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com slash nerdswithfriends. It helps us out a great deal and doesn't cost you that much. Plus, you get some cool rewards. So thank you for your support. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty and talk some nerdy confessions. The things we confess that make us nerds. I think I said that wrong. Who cares? When we confess the things that make us nerds. I wasn't paying attention. I yeah, so <laughs> said it all backwards. Had a had a minor stroke. You smell toast? <laughs> Just all the time. Oh. Is that weird? Yeah, I think you're fine. I think it's okay if it's all the time. If it's all the time, it's yeah, probably that's okay. normal. Yeah. <laughs> that's if your base- baseline is toast. If I stop fine. smelling the burnt toast, that's when you gotta worry. Isn't that such a weird fucking thing? Can you imagine if you're paranoid and you just smelt someone's cooking toast? Oh, God. Oh, God. Like I, I've definitely done that at my house before where I think someone, you know, one of the roommates got up and cooked toast at like midnight and I walk out to get like a dr- drink of water or something. I'm like, oh, God, it's happening. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Oh, fuck. Well, better go back to bed and jerk off one more time before I go. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out happy. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty. Well, let's do some nerdy confessions. Christian, what's your nerdy confession? Uh, I just started. In fact, I was just watching it right now. Ragnarok. Ooh, I'm on yeah. the third episode. It's on Netflix. It's pretty interesting. Not a lot of action yet, um, but I like it. It takes place in Norway. Obviously. Yeah. And then uh, there's... It'd be weird if it was like Southside Chicago. <laughs> That'd be dope. Actually. Ragnarok! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I don't want to give too much away, but giants are basically taking over or have taken over but they're going around looking like humans and there haven't been gods to fight them in a long time and then this kid shows up to town and he's like kind of exhibiting thor like powers kind of yeah so it's cool so far loves a hammer he fucking just tossed it hates trickery yeah yeah classic thor vibes and he's just like going around telling people i just threw a hammer like 500 kilometers and they're just like yeah whatever yeah anyway so and he's like dude show him just Cool, cool story bro God, can you believe this guy? I was like, why did you just show him? Just pick up a hammer, just fucking toss it. Like, yeah. it's, clearly, you can do it. But it's cool. I'm like on the third or fourth episode. Now, this one is this one of those. I think I've seen the trailer for it. Is this one of those uh, Netflix ones where it's like overdubbed in English, but it's like I'm watching it in Norwegian with English subtitles because yeah. I can't. I, I hate dubbing. I rather just fucking read. Sometimes I can deal with the dubbing, um, but if it's really bad and like really off the like. Not so much off the lips, because that's impossible, right? What yeah. was the German one? The um, that one was bad. I couldn't fucking do it. It was it was on Netflix. Was it the rain? 
No, it was. That was one of those. I thought that one, the dubbing was good. Oh, is that one you liked? Um, Fuck, it's bothering me. Mm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But that one I the started. The Roman with. one. No, no, no. But that was that that was good too. That was uh, Barbarians. Barbarians. And that one I saw in German. No, it was like it was kind of like Stranger Things, but in, in oh yeah, the rain. Was or, it the or, rain? Or wait, uh, is this something dark? Yeah, the, there was the one where they time travel through the portal yes, in the cave. Yes, that one. That wasn't the rain, but I know which one you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, so that one, the dubbing was really fucking bad, and I couldn't do it. I yeah. had to put it back in in German. Yeah. It, Where it fucks me up is like if it's a it show that they're speaking Spanish, so clearly I leave it because I understand that shit. But then the subtitles will be there, and like I'm like reading the subtitles and listening. I'm like, fuck! I'm like getting distracted, and then I'm just correcting. <laughs> yeah, just turn that shit off. And then I'm just correcting the bad translation. That's not what they fucking said. Yeah, just just listen in Spanish. <laughs> you just you could turn it off. Yeah, you can turn off subtitles. I thought when you just leave it. At, oh, maybe I'm. Yeah, you you're turn, probably right. Turn subtitles off, audio. Spanish. I just learned something. I didn't know you can do that. Yeah, I had to teach you how to do Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my nerdy confession. We were talking about it briefly uh, before the show. I actually went to see a movie uh, for the first time since last year. You saw I, Tenant. I, I saw Tenant last year. That was like August of last year. Yep. And then um, since and the only other one I've seen in theaters was A Quiet Place Part D. Saw it too. I I have to say, did you see it in theater? Did yes, you I saw it in theater? Uh, nice. And where, where did you go, um, Daily City. No, San Mateo? I saw the San Mateo, too. The one, we saw something else there. Yeah, the small theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like the reclined seats, and you can order food, and they, or you can order the food when you buy tickets, and they bring it to you in the oh, bag. Oh, really? Yep. I didn't know that. Except for the alcoholic drinks that oh. we had to go and get. I, I just, well, I we, we ate dinner before we went there, um, but uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun going back to the movies again, for sure, um, and that place is really cool because it's a small theater anyway. And when you book seats, they they book two next to you, so yeah, to exactly. the left, to the right, and they're people. big ass seats. Yeah. So that that equates and had to a six tray, feet. which was fucking nice. Yeah, and seat heaters. Did you know that? No. Yeah, you can hit the button and the seats warm up. Where? It's uh, next to the. It's it's kind of hidden. It's next to the recliner button. I saw the recliner button. See, yeah, there's heater. a little button underneath. Could have had my it. ass <sighs> warm. That's the best thing. Hot ass. But back to the topic at hand, Quiet Place Part Two. What did you think of it, Christian? I liked it, um, but you'd mentioned it, and I, I agree. Um, the first one was just so like original and so like it did the same thing. So there was nothing, not that it was bad. I really enjoyed it, but there was nothing that like, Oh my God, like this is yeah. so different. It did. It didn't, hit, as the kids say, it didn't hit quite the same way. Right. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I think the kids say that shit now. Uh, yeah. It, um, that one hits different as they would say. Um, it, it, the first one, cause I rewatched the first one in preparation just to remember everything that had happened. Um, and we won't spoil the second one cause it is, it is still fairly new and we've, you know, uh, we do recommend you go see it in theaters if you, if you feel safe. Um, but it's the first one was so good because literally for like the first, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of the first movie, there was no dialogue. Yeah. It's all subtitles and sign language yeah. and it's very quiet and, and seeing that in a theater for the first time, you're like, what? the fuck no like i i felt i remember eating popcorn and like oh shit I made, crunch. yeah like oh fuck crunch yeah yeah my friend my friend alex who i saw who, who i love seeing movies with but he he bought a fucking box of bunch of crunch <laughs> like the loudest <laughs> snack ever and he's like i'm gonna tear off the packaging before i get in there i'm like okay cool you know at least he's mitigating that but then i ever once i hear him say you hear it rolling around in the box. And then I think he dropped it at one point. I was Jesus. like, God damn it. <laughs> and you know everyone in the theater is just thinking, like, shit, fuck, can't take you anywhere. Yeah, this one is still good. Uh, picks up, like, literally right where the last one um, ended, ended yep. right? It was, like, almost the exact same scene. And you do see a little prequel scene, which they showed in the trailer, of the day that the sound aliens Yeah, it was, up. like, an hour before. Actually, that, well, you just you, – I don't know if that's giving it away. But, yeah, it was kind of cool seeing how they got there. Right, right, versus right. Versus before they were just there. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. Um, in the first one, there, there are little newspaper clippings and stuff where you can kind of piece together that, first of all, they were aliens and not just, like, crab monsters or something like that. Um, and uh, But this one, yeah, you see how they get there. You see how they initially take over kind of thing. Um, and then you um, – it was cool how they introduced – uh, Cillian Murphy's character, Killi okay. Killian Murphy. Or Killian, uh, Killian Murphy. I thought Killian. Murphy. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Cillian or Killian. I did not know. I thought he was tall. I thought he was a tall guy. 
I was watching yeah. the movie. He was the same height as the little girl. And that blew my mind. Oh, I was like, oh, he wasn't? Yes, he was. As, <laughs> Watch it again. As the deaf girl? Yes. He, he might have been just slightly taller than her. Yeah. And I was like, wait. Well, she always... al- she's also probably going through puberty and stuff because she's but at, see, I was at like, that age. I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, dude, this shit like blew my mind. I was like, no. In 28 days later, I felt like he was fucking tall. Yeah. And in Batman, when he was the scarecrow, I thought he was fucking tall. And I was watching this. And I'm like, wait, the fuck? I was like, is that the same guy? Yeah. Are yeah. You looking at him? I'm like, looking at how tall is Celia Mercy. Uh, he's, he's, you know, kind of short. Five foot seven. I mean, that's average. But I, it just, I was like six foot something. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I didn't think he was that tall. Yeah, you thought he was a fucking giant. I thought he was fucking tall as fuck. Also, I like, didn't know if you remember him from Batman, Christian Bale's not that tall either. Is he? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I know. Like, it doesn't fucking matter. But, like, I was watching it with the missus, and she was like, oh, yeah, he's a tiny guy. You know, it's like, and she loves him, so she knows everything about him. And she's like, yeah, like, I guess I have a thing for small guys. I'm like, thanks. I didn't think I came to the studio to get fucking roasted by you. <laughs> Boom, <Fuck>. roasted. <laughs> but I appreciate it, I guess. Look at this site. How, it's got his age, height, weight, biography. Jesus. Uh, he was born on the 25th of May. Happy birthday, Cillian Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> or Killian, whatever. Killian, whichever. Uh, he's five foot. This one says he's five foot nine. Oh, it gives see? him another two inches. I'm sure he loves that. Um, 154 pounds. Eye color blue. Hair color dark brown. Anyway, I thought you know his character was really cool. Um, you kind of see like, like obviously in the first one, John Krasinski is like, like the world's best dad. Yeah. And you know, um, except he got his. Kid killed. Well, actually, the kid got himself killed. The stupid kid got himself killed. Yeah. Okay, fucking playing with a toy rocket ship. Actually, the the little uh, the kid actors were great. Yeah, the the little boy was great. Like anytime like he got hurt or like there was something scary, I believed it. Like oh yeah, I great. for sure did. And like, he was such a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like the whole time, I'm like, if John Krasinski was alive to see this, he would be disappointed. <laughs> this is what I left behind. Yeah. I died for Jesus this. Jesus Christ, grow a pair. <laughs> yeah, um, he he did consistently do dumb things. A hundred percent. Um, and it it just fucking sucked. Um, I hate when movies do that when they make kids like dumb. Did you watch Army Army of the Dead? Did yes, talk- I did. Did we, we talk about it? We didn't really talk about it. We could touch on it briefly now if you like. But the daughter was cons- like same thing was Dude, cons- everyone in that fucking movie was fucking TikToked. <laughs> it was so bad. Okay. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I liked it. I really liked the German dude. The German dude was cool. He was fun. Yeah, like there was there was fun moments in it for sure, but it just it just like Zack Snyder like after, you know, everyone got back on his side for the Snyder cut. I felt like this one it was like, uh now this guy really doesn't. He's real hit or miss with movies. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I want to. They're planning a zombie universe, and I'm, I'm oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. I'm down for it. But like the, <laughs> there's. There's like there was so many things in it, um, and maybe mild spoilers for this one, but it's on HBO Max, so it's and been it's out for been a while. Out, like at this point, three two weeks, or three, two or three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, what's the deal with the robot zombies? We don't know. Right. Like th- that was just thrown in there for no reason. I, I every I, everything was out of focus. <laughs> like it's everything. Cheaper, te- cheaper CG that way. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, you just smudge the yeah. lines on the other. It was interesting because going into it, I knew that Tignataro was digitally inserted into everything. She was? Yeah. So she was not in the original movie. You know who was? Yeah, I know. Christy Christy Elia. Elia. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking alleged raper. I guess he wasn't a raper, a molester. Mo- no, he would they were underage, so it would still be But raping. I don't I don't think he had sex with them. He just he was, he just was trying. grooming them. <laughs> yeah, he was just trying real hard. Allegedly. It's not a crime if you try and you fail. <laughs> <laughs> no crimes committed. <laughs> no crimes. What? I He's still a garbage I, person. I, I didn't actually do it. I just tried I really just hard. Tried to and failed. <laughs> I don't think that's how justice system works. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess what do you get for attempted murder? Is yeah, that jail time? Is lots jail and time? lots and lots of jail time. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So he was originally the helicopter pilot. So Tignataro was uh, digitally inserted, and um, so she was by herself. For all scenes except for one. There was apparently one scene where she was actually... They brought back one of the actors okay. and actresses. Okay, if they CG in there, it was so good I didn't notice. Yeah, well, everything was out of focus, so who cares? That's a good point. She's just back in the corner with the fucking halo around her. It's just a cutout I just never even noticed. It's like in Star Wars. You know, in, in Star Wars with the land speeder, they just took Vaseline and rubbed it under the uh, under the land speeder. If it works, it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
there's a, a bunch of things that kind of bothered me in it. Like the guy with the, the saw, right? We see him in the intro using the saw. Yep. And the whole time he's like, oh, that's my baby. You know, don't touch my baby. I'm going, you know. And he's like, oh, I love it so much. He has this really intimate relationship with his saw. Never used it. Never used it. <laughs> and when they do use it, someone else is using it. They use it to cut through concrete. They use his fists instead. For, for standard, standard saw uses. <laughs> it's uh, not a very good weapon for killing zombies anyway, man. Well, yeah, but generally speaking in those movies – you don't have a bunch of good weapons. You, it, that's the fun of it. Yeah. You get the baseball bat. You get the hockey stick. You get, you know, fucking. Hockey stick would be terrible. Baseball bat would be Well, if right. you put a hockey stick with razor blades on the little you trying you know, to, the paddle part. Trying to cut it Just fucking zombie? slap shot their faces off. I guess. Yeah, yeah. that'd be fucking sick. <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, that's part of the fun is finding inventive ways. You know, you're surviving, so you're using what you have. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it just. There's so many, so many holes in it. Like they obviously didn't trust the guy who was the security guy. For good reasons. No one ever said anything. When the one chick is getting, uh, she busts through the the glass after he leaves her. Her behind. friend didn't even help. Her friend, her friend didn't do anything. Just watch. None of them did anything. They all have automatic weapons. Well, to be fair, the other ones didn't know she had popped out. They were all. They, he was. The I feel only like one. they were all looking back and they're like, "Come on!" And she's like, "Ah, it's punching zombies." She was actually like, "I, I when." They introduced her. I was like, okay, whatever. But when she started killing zombies, like, oh, yeah, she was awesome. I was like, oh, shit, she's going to fucking make it. And when she came back through the window, I'm like, fuck, yeah, she's awesome. And they're like, no, we're just going to let her die in front of her friend. Yeah, that sucked. And she didn't say, like, hey, don't trust that guy. He locked me back there. (laughs) Like, instead, she says, go on without me. So she said something. Yeah. But not any pertinent information. That's fair. Yeah. (laughs) And then and then while they were down in the bank vault. There was a thing where he's like, what if we're just doing this over and over again? And you see the dead people there, and they have the same clothing and jewelry. There's, there's theories about that, that they're, they, they are stuck in a loop. And, like, they're just getting better and better. But- yeah, but make make a movie of that. <laughs> like, make that the movie, not a bad heist movie. You know what I mean? Um, but who knows? Like, I I will see a second one if a second one comes out. But there's just there was so many, like, missed opportunities in this one. From what I've read about the robots that you were saying. And also, also, uh, uh, Scorpion, the guy who plays Scorpion, sends him into his casino to uh, steal his money out, right? Yes, because he already got paid on the insurance. Exactly. He to double up on it. But he wants to double his money. Easy. That's some nice Vegas. Easy peasy, Japanese. (laughs) You can't say that. (laughs) Yeah, well, he could because he's Japanese. Because he's Japanese, that's (laughs) right. Uh, I didn't know. First of all, I didn't know that was like an offense. It probably. I didn't know that was a saying. Wasn't it always like easy peasy lemon squeezy or whatever? No, no. I've heard the Japanese one, but like I didn't. Maybe it came from an offensive thing. You know, who who knows? What I it didn't. Was. I did, I learned that in the movie that that was a thing. I, I just no- thought it was cool because it rhymed. You know, <laughs> I'm a sucker for a good rhyme. Um, but uh, yeah, so he sends him in to steal his own money. Why doesn't he give them the combination to the safe? See, like. The missus brought that up, too. I was like, well, all right, you got to imagine he's the owner. He's got a bunch of people who probably, like, are doing security stuff. You're not going to really care as long as someone else is managing it. He might not have known. Maybe the dude who knew the combination he died. He couldn't find it out? I don't know. He's busy. There's no way one person knew the combination to that safe. That's the safest way? And he, Yeah. And then, and then like, they had the whole thing where they're trying to, like, uh, get zombies to trigger the pressure, ca- pressure plates for the booby traps. Yeah. And they're like trying to lure him, and they keep the zombie keeps trying to attack them and stuff. So they microwave a hand. They're like, "Oh, he's for heat." They, yeah, and that never came, comes into play again. Yeah, in the it whole worked. movie. Yeah, it worked, but it never comes into play again in the entire movie. Um, and and so, but why couldn't they just throw a zombie body on those pressure plates? They didn't know where it was. Yeah, but they just throw a bunch of zombie bodies. I guess then you don't have to deal with microwaving a zombie hand. <laughs> And almost getting bitten by a zombie. It didn't seem like it was that hard for him to just capture one either. He just had one and just brought it in a wheelbarrow. A <sighs> lot, lot of lot of plot holes. Nowhere near as good as Dawn of the Dead, which no. Zack Snyder did. Yeah. That one was a very good zombie movie. So if you're gonna watch a, if you want to watch a good zombie movie, watch that one. It's one of Zack Snyder's very early movies. Very, very good. Honestly, that's what I I was expecting. I Me still too. enjoyed it. I it still was- enjoyed it. Yeah, it was entertaining. Um, but <clears throat> there's just a lot of things that never got paid off. A lot of things that never got explained. Oh, the zombies that dried out in the sun and then come back to live in the rain? Okay, cool. <laughs> I get it. You're trying to set up another cinematic universe after the, your first one failed, but, like, come on. it's Let's let's so, pay some of it off in so one movie. The robot zombies, what I was going to say earlier, was that supposedly, yeah. like, someone had put them in to, like, watch how they behave. So they, they were just to see, like, the hierarchy. Because obviously you see that there was, like, I don't know, the leader zombie. Yeah, the king zombie guy. And his wife. 
and his wife a, zombie. And baby zombie, apparently. No, had. <laughs> had a baby zombie. Yeah. Poor baby zombie didn't make it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was entertaining. Um, I think Quiet Place Part 2 was much better. Yes. Um, not as good as the first one, but there was some good stuff. Um, I liked when uh, when when you meet, uh, what's his name, uh, Digimon Hansu. Jaimon Hansu. How do you say his name? I don't Something know. Something like that. <laughs> I just assumed his parents loved Digimon. They were like, dude, this is going to take over. That Pokemon <laughs> shit, that's not going to last. Digimon. That's the one. That's where it's at. I liked his character. Um, I liked Cillian Murphy and kind of how he, his character evolved throughout the movie. Very good. Very good stuff. Go check him out. All right. Well, one last thing. And I was yeah. thinking about, like, how, like and it, I didn't think about this in the first movie, but how come no one tried to make just, like, a really loud noise to just consistently distract them? Yeah. Like a machine that was just like, wah, wah, like and then they all just like kind of went to it because the, they only went towards noise. Right, exactly, like, exactly. I was wondering, like, why didn't you do that? Why didn't I think about that last time? Yeah. And I was I, like, they have to see a little bit because they're, they're navigating through stuff. Like, I don't know. No, yeah, I think the whole deal. First of all, they also fig- no one figured out that they couldn't swim. Like, in the whole year yeah. that they've been around, <laughs> like, no one else, aside from those few people on that, well, that's given a little bit away. But they can't swim. But they can't swim. Yeah, I mean that. You know, I there's there's some again there's some uh, things in there that you know don't make an, a whole lot of sense. But it's it's fine. It was still a very effective, good movie. Um, again, the first one was so original, so good um, that it, it's hard to beat that. But this one is is a good sequel. I definitely would say go watch it. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's take a quick little break, and when we come back from our break, we're going to talk about our past year of playing Dungeons and Dragons. So we'll be right back. And we're back. Buy that shit. Consume it. Yeah. Or go to the place that they want you to go to. Yeah consume buy spend your money um all right christian we've been playing dungeons and dragons solid together for a, over a year brought now. the shirt oh yeah the dungeon master nice. shirt with all the all the Druid, classes paladin yep i'm wearing a destiny shirt but you know that's cool <laughs> <laughs> he's basically a rogue the guy on here Cade, Cade six um <clears throat> yeah so we've been playing dungeons and dragons for a year now we we both played dungeons and dragons before that, but you know, as it as it goes with most tabletop RPGs, I feel like, you know, sometimes the schedule falls apart, people drop out, the game just comes to a standstill. So what there's a lot of things that will kill a campaign, um, but I feel pretty good about this one. We've been playing since I think April of 2020, so we passed our one year anniversary, and uh, I just wanted to kind of go over some of the things that we learned from playing it consistently and getting pretty far in the campaign so far. So I think uh, I want to say, I think you guys are about halfway done. Oh, nice. I think with the campaign, if I'm not mistaken, though, obviously things can happen after it, but <laughs> um, so what, what are your overall impressions so far? Of I am surprised no one has tried to seduce another character or like uh, yeah. an NPC. I feel usually there's one person in the group. Well, there's no bards in the group. That's true, but I feel like anyone <laughs> could got him. <clears throat> Anyone could really try to do that. Yeah. No murder hoboing. That's been kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, and now now just uh for those of you who don't know, I'm the dungeon master in this game. Christian's one of the players and we play with our other friends from the Sourpuss podcast. Uh now officially, I believe, an Age of Radio in the works, I think. Or maybe when this comes out it's official. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? They but accept- welcome to the family. They accept it already. But check out Sour Post Podcast. They're, they're a bunch of funny ladies over there. And they always talk about delicious sour beers and whatever they're uh, nerding out over, too. So another nerdy podcast to the group. Um, but, yeah, so we play with them and a couple of their friends. And one thing I've which noticed. Which is now our friends. Which is, yeah, of course. We, again, we've been seeing, seeing them like every week almost for an entire year. Um, and one thing that I've noticed is that um, – there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, variation in experience um, to the you know with Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop RPGs, as well as variations in level of role playing too, right? 
So I think one thing that everything does really, everyone does really well is they can do things that their character would do. You know what I mean? Um, for the most part. And I think, um, now not everyone's doing a funny voice. Our, our friend Blake is the king of that. So yeah. it's hard to, uh, hard to beat him at his own game. There. And Tim. <clears throat> Tim, Tim does some too. Yep, exactly. I Tim's, think he he sang for us in a voice. That's true. He 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 wrote a song, and that was as a different character. Too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, there's some good role playing going on. Um, <clears throat> I will say it's. Uh, I think for some players, they're still figuring out exactly what all they can do in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. You know what I mean? Um, it's a lot more than go into this room, look around, and see a bad guy, kill a bad guy. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that's, that's one thing that I've noticed is, you know, if you're, if you're just getting into tabletop RPGs, especially a game like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, um, you can, you can really make the game your own, you know, you can really like, Oh, uh, we run into this bad guy, this, this particular one, he's not, he's just surprised that we're here. Maybe we don't have to fight him. Maybe we can talk our way out of it. Maybe we can join him and and become a bad guy with him. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff you can do um, in the world of D and D. So don't be afraid to try new things. Your your DM uh, will for sure give you the sense of, hey, this is going to work out or this is not going to work out. You know what I mean? If you bust in and a dragon is like attack, you know, rambling for you, attacking you guys. Maybe not the best time to talk talk it out, you know. <laughs> Unless level twenty bard, you know. Yeah. <laughs> with luck. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. If you can cast luck for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, what what else for you? What what other things have you picked up over the past year? I feel like everyone's pretty good at like working uh, together, mm-hmm. for, um, which is it's kind of rare in a group. I feel like at least in other games, there's always. I don't know. I almost always there's always that one player is like, come on, like just get. Go with it. Just go. Go. Like, yeah. don't try to derail the game or micromanage the idea. <laughs> yeah, I think you know that's a common thing. I think with uh, with any of these games, especially if it's if it's not like a core friend group, you know, like now we are very good friends with you know Crystal and Ashley, but we had never met any of these other people yeah. leading up to this. But we got lucky. They're really cool. We got lucky. They're very cool. Uh, but there's always that chance when you you put together a group like that where. Um, you know, there, there's like, there's one who's like the rules lawyer who won't let you, you know, or like, um, actually, well, blah, 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 blah. And then there's, you know, um, or there's ones who always want to go against what the group is going, where the group's like, oh yeah, I think we should go back to town and, and talk to this guy. Cause he was saying this and someone else is like, no, actually, I think we should explore this cave and, uh, go to th- this other place. It was like, well, that's not part of the mission. It's like, well, that's what I want to do. You know? We're well, like, I'm a rogue. Wherever there's coins, is you got me. So yeah, <laughs> there's a chance to loot. I'm fucking going. Exactly. Um, so I think that that's we're lucky in that sense where it's you know, um, it's it's easy for this group to kind of like everyone's kind of is easy going and go with the flow, you know. Um, but if you are one of those players who uh, either is fights with your group, your player group, or fights with your DM, don't be that person or stop playing. Either one. That, that's a. I think that's a. And a small ask is to be a good cooperative player because Dungeons and Dragons is a cooperative game, as we learned with Steve yeah, yeah. Phoenix, right? You know, she's she's a big advocate of like this is not a game uh, where me as a dungeon master is giving you guys tasks to do. We're all playing this game together and trying to make a story together. So I am a player, even though I am controlling the world. <laughs> like I still have to have fun too. You know what I mean? And um. It's it's easy if with a couple rogue players, uh, not not class rogue players, but players who don't go with the flow. Um, it's easy to have a bad time. I think. I'm curious about stretching my legs as a DM. <clears throat> about yeah. doing, <clears throat> I've only done like a mini game, sure. like once, but uh, not, and also they give you a chance to fucking play because <laughs> you're always yeah. DMing. Well, luckily my my old uh, D, uh, DM for my Pathfinder game says he's. Uh, getting ready to start up again. So I may finally have a chance to play. But Pathfinder. But Pathfinder, yeah. So I'm going to have to relearn all those rules. Because <laughs> Pathfinder 2.0 basically came out, and then the pandemic hit. We stopped. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm still learning the rules. They're pretty similar, though. Um, I I will say, um, if you're interested in, in trying your hand at DMing, I think 
if I was to do it all over again, um, I would, I would do a series of one shots first. Um, and the reason being is like, so we're playing storm Kings thunder, which is a, a it's a actual dungeons and dragons, wizard of the coast, um, published adventure where it's all written in a hardcover book. Um, and you go by chapter to chapter. Um, and one of the hard parts about doing a full campaign like that, first of all, is you have to read at least most of it, or at least kind of like, uh, skim through. So, you know what the story is and what the overall goal is, because if you just go chapter by chapter by chapter, like you could be improving in the moment and, you know, reacting to what your players are saying and um and then you kill off a character but then you realize later that oh that character is supposed to be the big bad guy who was <laughs> supposed to escape and come back later or something you know so just quick rewrite they never really died they faked yeah, it yeah just that was that was a life model decoy um so there is it, it's a lot of information to take in and keep straight um and i think most books do a fairly good job of keeping it all together. Um, but I think it's it's much easier and much more rewarding to do a one-shot or like a very short campaign where it's like maybe you level up two levels um, throughout the adventure rather than this one, which, you know, who knows where we're going to end. I'm curious if it would be easier just writing your own campaign. At least that way you know where everything's going. Right. And I mean, that's, an, that's definitely another... It's just you wouldn't be able to throw the maps on Roll20. That's anything that would suck. Yeah, you'd have to build them yourself. Oh, you can build them. Yep. Yeah, oh, you nice. can. You can. It's fucking difficult, but you can do it. <laughs> um, and and you don't have to like obviously the maps that we have in Roll Twenty, um, because we bought the pre-made uh, package in there. Um, they're very for the most part they're very well set up. They have the dynamic lighting and stuff like that, um, which once you get the hang of that, it all becomes really uh, intuitive. But um, <clears throat> it it can. If you're writing your own, it's much easier to write your own and I think do it in person. Yeah, for sure. Because then you can kind of draw things out and you're like, okay, here's the cave kind of. And it, it doesn't yeah, have yeah. to be exact, right? You know, um, where Roll20, I mean, it could be hours setting up one map for yeah. one area. You I don't know? think I would do that. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. And, you know, you don't have to go crazy with it, but it does take a long time. Um, yeah, writing your own, I've done that too. And I think it's really fun. Um, and it's really rewarding because it does, because unlike reading the book where you have to read the entire book and know what's going to happen, what's, what leads to what leads to what, if you're creating it, it like the sky's the limit. You can really make whatever you want happen and it makes it a lot easier to improv. Oh yeah, for sure. So, um, I did, I, I wrote like a one shot, it was like a one shot, two shot, you know, kind of thing. I think it took two, two nights to, uh, complete and, um, you know, you can, it, it's very easy to write like a dungeon delve or like, you know, like a, a simple mission or whatever. Um, and I think, you know, what's cool about it is then, then it's, it's much more like I'm playing the game. Like I have certain story beats that I know have to be in there, but like I could just let them do whatever they want and just come up with shit on the yeah. fly, you know? Um, and it gets easier and easier and easier as you experience more monsters and more, puzzles and traps that you see in these like pre-written modules see like for me like if i did one of the book campaigns and they're like oh i want to go into this building i'm like ah shit i don't remember what was in this building right i gotta go and hit the book a hundred percent and that's that's how it is with storm king thunder so for instance we're past this part in the story now so i, I don't mind disclosing this to you um and to any of the other players who are listening um so in storm king's thunder at one point you have to go um retrieve these giant relics right mm -hmm. you remember that part and they're they're basically uh buried under these burial mounds of these barbarians and so you have to pick there's like seven different i think there's seven different giant relics that you can get and you have to pick which which ones you want to go get now you only need one to progress the story mm -hmm. um <laughs> but you could get all seven okay right and um and so like you guys, you know, the game before, you would be like, okay, I think we'll go to this one. It's the closest one on the map. 
we could just go in and get it and that'll be easy. I'm like, okay, cool. So I remembered that and I studied up on that one instance. Mm -hmm. But there's obviously six other ones that you could have gone to. And so after you got that one and you guys are like, well, maybe we should get more to see if, <laughs> see, see, maybe that'll help us more. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> Cause it's like, I mean, there's huge, like, there's yeah, like a yeah, chapter yeah. on each one essentially. And I'm like, uh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys could do it. And luckily, like, the group on their own kind of decided, ah, oh, let's just bring the one back and then we'll try for another one later. But it's like, oh, my God. I'm going to have to, like, fucking go by the seat of my pants and read the thing and then look up the map on Roll20. And luckily, that's the one cool thing about buying a module on Roll20 is I could click on the map and it'll be preloaded with some tokens. It won't have all their actions See, preset. this is how good you are at DMing that, we, like, you – I can't – like that would drive me my anxiety like out and I would probably oh, yeah. show it physically but like I didn't get any sense from you yeah. at all. Yeah. So it's called acting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like holy shit now I don't know if I want to DM. Well, well that yeah so that's one of those pitfalls of doing a game like that, you know, um one that's pre-written like that because um the the game is designed to give you a bunch of options and like this one in particular, you know, Storm King Thunder, it's designed to have um you know, some replayability maybe, you know, like if you were to play that same game with me, maybe next year with a different group of people, like we could make it so that it's not the same exact story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like in <clears throat> the first town you guys went to was, uh, uh, golden fields or one of the first towns. One of that, I think it was like second, the one. second town. Okay. So in that, uh, the thing that led you to golden fields there was th basically three options depending on who you talk to. There was Golden Fields, Bryn Shander, and uh, some other one. Okay. So, so if we had if we were to do it again, like yes, you would probably go to Nightstone first. That was the first town, yeah. I think. But then you could go to one of these other towns and have a completely different experience there. That's pretty cool. And then yes, you would probably go and meet Harshnag and, and the Green Dragon and stuff, and go to the temple. But we could put different things in the temple, and then you could. When you get Harshnag's map, you can go to a different one of these things. So it could be a very different experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And each one of those giant relics leads to a different giant lord. So now you you got one of seven different paths to go on, and now that's where your adventure is taking you now. But if we were to do it again, we could mix it up and go to see. A like, one. okay, this is what I find interesting. How much? Well, you you we did the package on roll twenty, but the book is probably what like forty bucks, maybe. Uh, I think a module is like thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars. They don't fuck you like Games Workshop does. That's what that was the point I was gonna make. Like, that's a thirty five dollar book that you yeah. can play multiple campaigns. Yeah. We've been how many hours? Like, we did a year. Yeah, and we're about half a year of like you know, so call it fifty two weeks. Um, with a week off here or there kind of thing. Um, but then we're playing for two, sometimes three hours a night. But look at that. Like, And then you're saying we can go back and have a different story. Yeah. Yeah, you really get your money's worth out of it. And, and you know, a, maybe a better GM than I am, at least as far as I am currently, could even add more and more flavor text in there. You know what I mean? You Versus could, how many books of fucking uh, of Warhammer? Warhammer? Yeah, I know. And I not one fucking game. I don't want to think about it <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, it's it's Wizards of the Coast. I think all, you know fans of Dungeons and Dragons and like or you know Satine's uh, new thing, the Battle of the Bars that, that is coming out that got fully funded by the way. Um, like talk about like how much effort goes into creating yeah. a world like that, but also making it so that you know it's not disposable. You can't just go through it one time and be done with it that's that's another thing with hers is that it's a it's not only a campaign but a campaign setting so you can make your own adventures and stuff yeah. within that setting and now you have like just like water deep you know there's a big water deep only book that um where you can use it where it describes all the shops and stuff in that town you can make your own adventures in that setting. So there's a lot of good tools out there. I'm just remembering of them explaining like how they wrote it and how they broke it down into these steps. And I was like, maybe I can write one. And I was like, yeah. nah, I'm not that talented. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where you can, you got to start somewhere. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, I think I told the story uh, briefly on the podcast before, but like my first one shot that I wrote, I took something that I like, some fantasy story that I liked. I took Lord of the Rings. And I kind of wrote a campaign around that. 
I didn't want it to be just Lord of the Rings. They're taking a ring to Mordor to drop it in the volcano. I don't want it to be that. Yeah, yeah. But I took like one of my favorite scenes from that book, which was the Mines of Moria, and um, and so in the Mines of Moria, you know, the, the Fellowship of the Ring, they go down in there, um, then uh, they're attacked by uh, orcs and goblins and whatnot, um, and. Then at the end, they go down deeper into the thing and they wake up the Balrog and the Balrog is like this big thing that Gandalf dies fighting. That's like, that's that, you know, encounter in a nutshell. So I made a similar thing where they, um, the, the group were going to visit their uncle, you know, like, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Gimli's uncle was in charge of the mines of Moria. They were going to visit him for some big festival or whatever. They get there and the whole mine's dead. Like there's been battle inside the halls and they're like, what's going on? And they have to unsolve it. The, they have to uncover this mystery. And then there's this wizard that keeps like, you know, fighting them throughout the thing on different levels of the, the dungeon essentially. And they're like, this fucking evil wizard killed all these people. They killed my uncle, whatever. And they end up uh, confronting the wizard at, at the very end of it. Um, but then after they beat the wizard, they realize that the wizard wasn't the bad guy at all. It was the Balrog that this wizard was coming down to stop. And so you guys killed the good guy. You, they kill him, and he's and as he's dying, he's like, "Fly, you fools!" <laughs> and then the fucking Balrog comes up, and then they have to beat them. And that was the big climax of the thing. Nice. And then after he fights him, I had the the mine start collapsing, so they had to run out of the mine, kind of thing. As was, so it's like. You take a simple idea yeah, yeah. and you just kind of morph it into something your own. You could do something like Star Wars where you have to take down this evil fortress that only has this one weakness that you know about. <laughs> but then you go in there and you realize that the head of the fortress, um, like the evil king, sorcerer king or whatever, is actually related to one of your player characters. Like it could be, it could be yeah, a yeah. really fun thing to, you know. Uh, come up with like a simple idea like that. And those are great, like one shots, you know, one or two sessions, you can be done with it. Um, and then from there, maybe next time you do, you do two different one shots and you kind of combine them together through some through line. And then you, you add three and then four. And then eventually you're writing your own campaign thing. So I don't know if I'm that creative in writing, but <laughs> see, like storytellers like you, Satine, like you guys break it down and you're like, oh, it sounds easy. And then you're like, you try to sit down, you're like, this is hard as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one thing I think Satine said that was really uh, important was coming up with a deadline, you know, where, um, like, for instance, for that Lord of the Rings one, we were going on a cabin trip and everyone wanted to play D&D &D for the first time. Or one guy, it was like the second time kind of, but like the first time was only like three sessions long. And so... Um, I had that deadline and then I had I had parameters I wanted. I wanted it to be like a full experience for someone. So I wanted there to be combat, puzzles, a big bad guy at the end, some magic items and like leveling up once or twice. You know, so they get you get the full gamut of yeah. D&D, &D, right? And so um you know, if you if after you have that much information, I have to be done by this time. I, I want this, 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 and this in it. Then you're just kind of connecting the dots. So I think if you were to start off on your own, I would take the same approach. Come up with like, okay, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have this done in one month. One month is a long time to get one or two nights of Dungeons and Dragons written. That's easy peasy. And then you'd be like, okay, what do I really, what do I like most in Dungeons and Dragons? Do I like puzzle solving do i like traps and, and mazes do i like big awesome enemies and tactical you know encounters what do i like the most okay i write that, that and that down and then now you kind of write something around it you know so i think it's it's difficult like don't get me wrong <laughs> but it's it can be really fun too like watching them go through the stuff and like you know finding the things like like with you guys with that rock trap <laughs> Like that was the most fun I had in that entire campaign because there was this trap where it's kind of like Indiana Jones where the ball rolls down um, this thing. And so basically if you go through this square and you're not a giant, this ball forms and runs and rolls over you. You can run away and try to dodge out of the way if you're lucky. But if you're not and you're too close to it, you just get run over and you take a shit ton of damage. These guys kept, kept just trying and trying and trying. They're like, what's back there? And then even at one point, you guys didn't realize that Harshnag, who is this giant that's helping them along the way, 
was on the other side and could look into the rooms that you wanted to get in. <laughs> like no one asked him and he just kept walking back and forth through the thing. You know, you know what for me what it was is like, oh, I thought it was like in video games where like you set the trap, you dodge it, and then you go like you Yeah, know, you like, can go around it. You can go around it. So that was my thought process. Nah, it's fucking magic, bro. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can kind of like go in once once the ball starts rolling back up and stuff. So but yeah, it, it's funny to watch things like that unfold when they're figuring out things um that you have set up and thought really hard about it's really like it is a rewarding thing to see that kind of stuff happen um wh- now what what are some things that as you've played over this last year what are some things you, that like maybe you would do differently next time when either creating a character or playing a campaign I, I, i'm gonna try to do a voice i think i really want to try um no, it wasn't the last time we had Satine on, but the, the time before that where I was telling mm-hmm. her, like, you know, I really want to try to do voices. She's like, just do it. She's like, whether yeah. it's good or bad, you know, it yeah. doesn't matter. So, but that's something I have to get over. So maybe, like, I don't know, practice some kind of accent. Well, it's, it, yeah, it's one of those things. And you you hear my voices throughout the thing. None of them are any good. They're all just they're all just off the top of my head. <laughs> and sometimes they change. Like, I forget what I did for this guy on this last session. I didn't think you were going to talk to him again. So here, I'll just make it up again. It's. You know, it, it's not that big a deal. Or you can get really into it like our friend Blake does. And, and he like his character has a very definitive voice and a very definitive personality. Yeah. You know, he's he gets really into it. But, you know, you have someone like, you know, like Ashley um, uh, or Clover in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, she doesn't really do that much of a voice, but she does – she does what her character would do. Right, right, right. You know, um, the, I forget she's flirting with one of the characters in the game kind yep. of thing. And um, and that's fun. As long as that's in there, like, she's role-playing enough, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's, um, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever level of role-playing you're comfortable with is fun. But, yeah, doing a voice can be fun. Mix it up a little bit. Um, I like to think um, – even before a, before a voice, like come up with like a personality for your character of like, like this is, and it could be a, a facsimile of some other character in pop culture or whatever. Like uh, he could be very much like Han Solo or like Luke Skywalker or Frodo Baggins or whatever, like, you know, the reluctant hero. Um, if you come up with that, everything else becomes really easy when yeah. it comes role playing. You know, like, oh, what would Han Solo well, that, do? And that's something Blake did. And he's like, all right, he's a dude who's going to try to get people to convert to his religion. Mm-hmm. And anytime he runs into someone, you know, he finds a way to bring up his uh, his deity. Yeah. So yeah, it's something that uh, that yeah that he does good. Yeah, I think I think that's that's what's part was fun, and it's like, you know, whatever whatever level role playing is, is you're comfortable with, it can. It, no one cares at the table. No one should care anyway how good your voice is or how, you know, how in-depth and theatrical you are. Like, we should all just be there to have fun. And I think, you know, that that's when you know you have a good group is when everyone is just like, do whatever you want. It's fine, <laughs> you know. Um, I think, you know, one thing that I would do next, next time I pick up one of these pre-written modules to do um, is I would definitely, like – I would take the time and fucking just read the whole thing. Like I do it a couple chapters at a time because it it's it doesn't read like a novel. You no, know what I mean? it doesn't. It's it's like reading one of those choose your own adventure books, but just reading it front to back. Yeah, it's stupid <laughs> and it's not very interesting. But um, you know, a couple times that has kind of you know uh, gotten me into a, a bit of a jam where I'm like, oh shit, like. Uh, they got further than I thought they would this time, so now I'm gonna have to kind of like quickly page through it, and it's not as fun of a DMing experience if you're having to like figure it out. Um, again, if you're writing your own, that's less of a problem. You just have to take notes of what decision you make, so it carries forward into the story. But um, that would be one thing. And plus, like I think doing a little research on the actual module, um, like when we started doing Storm King's Thunder, I didn't know anything about it but you had the book so yep. i was like let's do it um giants sound cool um but i come to find out that it's kind of um it's kind of a poorly rated one amongst the oh really mo- modules yeah and i it, a lot of it is because of some of the things that i i find frustrating with it um and like without giving too much away of like what 
um, of what happens in your campaign. Um, there are certain things where in the book, it's like, um, there, there's a scene that has to happen in, in the story, in the main, uh, path of the story. And when that scene happens, it mentions like maybe a bad guy or a place or whatever, um, that sounds important. Right. Um, well, here, here's a good example because it's it's far in the past now, so it's, it's fine. Nightstone, right? Mm-hmm. The very first area we go to. Yes. The giants steal this giant rock. Yes. Right? The Nightstone. The Nightstone doesn't really do anything. <laughs> like, it has no it has no pertinence to the, the story. And for the longest time, you guys were like, dude, we got to figure out what's going on with the Nightstone, with the Nightstone. And I'm like, no, forget about the Nightstone. <laughs> But, like, na- but you just said they stole it. They stole it. They did. Yeah, it's gone now, but you know, who cares? But you know, as the story goes on, you find out that there's bigger problems threatening the giants and whatnot, and, and that you have to figure out. Um, but like there are several of those throughout this campaign. And some of them, like, you can kind of get ahead of if you're reading far enough ahead and just cut it off at the pass and just be like, I'm not including this because it's gonna introduce this other character that they're going to want to go see. But the book literally says, so-and-so is not involved in the rest of this campaign if you want to write, but he may be involved in other adventures. And you're like, <laughs> fuck. Like, so I have to buy another book. It doesn't even say which book. It's just like, uh, yeah, he's he's around, but he's not part of this story. I'm like, why'd you introduce him then? I'd be, it'd be interesting as a DM. It's like, oh, maybe we should go talk to him. No, you're not going to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, if he's you dead. go there, you're, yeah, he's, he's dead now. He died. It's weird. But you just said he was like, no, he's dead. He's dead. Yeah, it's weird. So-and-so <laughs> lied to you. It's crazy. But, yes, yeah, so, so that can be pretty frustrating. And then also, you know, part of the thing that I think actually makes it a pretty good campaign, like I mentioned, all these different story paths to go down. Yeah. That makes it a very difficult one to run because now you have to, like, obviously be prepped for all of those. Right, right, or right. be a very quick reader and reactor. So. Um, I can see some of their points that people have made on. But, yeah, do a little research if you're going to pick up a pre-written module. Um, I will say if you're playing virtually, Roll20 is an excellent resource. Buying that pack on there was, like, I mean, it was the best decision. I can't imagine. <laughs> like, can you imagine, like, having to draw out the Temple of the Allfather? Yeah. I would sucks. fucking hate that. <laughs> it would be one straight line with a big room at the end. It'd be like, well, there's no sideways. You know, I just realized people stopped drawing on the maps. Yeah. That was a big thing for a while. Don't bring it up, please. <laughs> I hate erasing dicks from the map. And it wasn't even the guys doing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the ladies love drawing the dicks. Any any final thoughts as far as... Uh, I want Dungeon- to see where it goes. Dungeon- oh, Desert Dragon's DMing, but like now I think... You, my interest of how much I wanted to DM what you just explained got pushed back. So oh. I'm like, I want to do it less. Well, I, di- I didn't mean to do that. Uh, <laughs> so much homework. It, it is. It's a lot of homework, which is why you can see like, you know, um, and I'm sure some of the other players can see, I get a little frustrated if someone cancels half hour before. Right. Yeah. Which that happened a couple of times. I'm like, come on guys. You know, because it's one of those things where, you know, I have to reread all this information of what we did last time, what we're supposed to do this time, plus a little bit further if you guys go really fast, yeah. right? Because you can skip whole parts of the campaign. And then if I haven't read for it, I'd just be like, uh, well, I haven't read that yet, guys. We're ending tonight. So, um, you know, it, it's a lot of work to read all that stuff. Then, you know, especially when you're working with, say, Roll20, you have to go in and make the tokens and whatnot. If you're playing an in-person game, it's even more because you have to have the maps, like, pre-drawn out. Yeah. You have to be, you know, have all your minis or whatever, your dice and stuff. So it is a lot of work that goes into it. So when you're playing a game all together, you got to be respectful of everyone's time. I think that's that's a really important aspect of the game. And when that happens, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. And obviously life happens. Like, you know, our, our friend Ashley, who uh, basically her job is not letting her play, play yeah. with us, right? Which sucks because, you know, we like having her in the game. But oh, there's two Ashleys. That's just <laughs> true. There's two Ashleys, which makes things super confusing. Yeah, I mean, it's not that confusing. I just use their character names. Kaya, in this in this sense. Um, yeah, so she can't play with us, which kind of sucks. Um, her boyfriend, Tim, is is basically playing two characters, so good on you for that one. Um, but it's like, as long as you're up front with the group, and like, look, 
it's hopefully in the next couple of weeks this should be over. Then you know it's fine. You know, it's just it's a game about communication. Really, is what the entire game is about. So, a uh, little communication goes a long way. Any final thoughts on that? No, no. I think everyone should play D and D. It's a, it's a really fun game, and you know we're we're really living in the golden age of it now. Now I've only been playing that Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder for I don't know three years now. Um, but like, even I can realize it's, it's like, we're in such a good time for it. Yeah. There's so many like Kickstarters. There's so many Patreons and so many like just, you know, fan created PDF think modules and books and, and characters Amazing. and dice. monsters, dice, uh, miniatures, maps, you know, there's so much cool stuff being created for tabletop like if you think back to like 1979 or whenever it came out, I think it was around then 78, 79. And like these guys are just sitting around a table with a, a pen and paper and that's it. Yep. You know, like compared to what we have now where you can have like lights and music and, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. I mean, we're really living in the golden age of tabletop RPG. So if you're going to get into it, get into it. It's fun. Um, I've heard Gloomhaven is another good game that's like, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons light, where you don't necessarily need a DM. I almost bought it, so I saw it was like three hundred bucks or something like it's that. It's three hundred bucks, and it's like basically one time use. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's a crazy one. It's called a what's known as a legacy board game, where basically as you play it, you put stickers on the board or write on cards or some and stuff like that. So once you're done. Mm-mm. you're done yeah nope <laughs> yeah fuck that um yeah or you can get a game like kingdom death monsters which, which is like six hundred dollars and you have to paint like 150 minis no thanks oh that might be for you but yeah fuck the minis are so sick though oh, i love it but yeah check it out guys and it, if you have any good like gm or player tips for dungeons and dragons drop them down in the comments below or send them to us on twitter or facebook we love hearing that kind of stuff and, um, again, if you have any questions for us too, uh, let us know. Um, obviously we're not super experts. Um, but you know, we, we have friends who are, you know, <laughs> uh, Satine being one of them and, and even Orion being another one of yeah. them. Um, so, uh, let us know if you guys have any questions or any trepidation getting into tabletop RPGs. Cause it, when it's going good, it's a lot of fun. So, um, one year down and hopefully not an entire another year to go. <laughs> I just wanted to do new things, but it, it's fun. I think it's a it's a fun fun game, and I can't wait to see how you guys progress through it. All righty. Well, thank you guys for listening, liking, and subscribing. Click that button down so you get notified when a new episode comes out every single week. And thank you to our patrons who make this show possible. Um, you guys are the ones paying for our dice to play D&D, <laughs> so we, we do appreciate that. Um, if you want to become a patron yourself, Check us out at patreon.com slash nerds with friends. And uh, for a dollar or two a month, you can become one of our patrons, help support the show, help us make this great content that you guys love listening to. Christian, thank you as always. For, Grazie. And thank you for bringing a good player in D&D most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and to all the nerds out there, remember, you're not alone. You're with friends. This is Nerds with Friends. Thank you and good night.